So happy Guru Purnima. It's a full moon tonight and uh, 2014, so Guru Purnima tonight. Uh, we're going to have a Guru ceremony at our office. We're going to do a Guru Puja and uh, honor all the masters and uh, different uh, great teachers and uh, transmitters of consciousness that have come before us and to all the ones that are here now, you know, all the ones that are in the body or, or not. Um, but I thought today would be a good day for me to talk to you a little bit about the Guru Consciousness and, you know, at least share what I know about this whole Guru thing, you know. There are a lot of misunderstandings around Guru and this leads to a lot of abuse of power. There are many people that claim to be gurus and they're not really gurus. They are people with spiritual power, but they're not shifting your consciousness to free you. They're keeping you enslaved in some way, shape or form. So um, there are many ways of power on this realm. You know, a person that has more money can have more power than someone else. A person that has more physical strength can have more power. And you can choose to use this power to assist your fellow person or to help them or, you know, bring more relationships into your life. Or you can use this power to destroy, conquer and submit all people to your will. And this will is rooted in desire and fear. So I guess I'm speaking to you about this because there are people that have not transcended you know, major parts or patterns of fear in their ego. They have not transcended their ego. Um, I hate to speak about it like this because, you know, I'm giving you the impression that I have transcended mine and, and I have not. I mean, there are different levels of the ego that pop up all the time, but your intention to see through the illusion is, is important if you're seeking to guide other people through their illusion. So what we do have is we have some people with spiritual abilities. So we can say this, if I have more money, does that mean I have spiritual power? According to your definition, maybe not. But the truth is that is a, a type of spiritual power. Having more money can be classified as a spiritual power. You have an attractive quality or maybe a work ethic or maybe a will that is something that could be called a city, a spiritual power. And I can choose to use this power for good or for evil, I guess. I try not to really get into these archetypes of good and evil because they're really, I don't really believe in that. Uh, but what I will say is that there are people out there that will assist you in your evolution and people out there that will tell you that they're assisting you in your evolution, but they are not. They're more often than not looking to how they can keep you around to use your energy to uh, make their ego feel better or how they can keep you around so that way there's a reinforcement of how important they are you know i've worked with many people over the last few years and i will let people go on purpose if i don't think that i'm helping them out and this might come through conflict they might think jason you're such an asshole, right? But this is necessary because I cannot keep people around if I'm not benefiting them. If they're incapable of connecting with me, if they're incapable of wanting to connect with me, they, like they don't even want to, like why is it right for me to keep them around just so I can make a couple dollars for them to show up to a meditation or I could uh, use them for some way of me continuing my survival. That's not actually true guru work. The guru work takes priority over the making a living and over um, idealisms, you know, over my idealism you should be this way or I, you know, it, 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 go, it transcends all that. So uh, for those of you that are watching this video that might not be around me right now, uh, this, is, this, is, this is why this stuff happens. I've seen that there's a part of your heart that doesn't want to be there and there's a desire that you have to be somewhere else. and in that moment for me to keep you around is just torturing you. I'm not assisting you. You know, you don't want me to show you how to get free of this illusion. You want to do it on your own. And even if it's longer and more torturous, that's, that's the way you want to do it. So 
I have to let you do that. It's not right for me to keep you around and say, no, no, I know a faster way and, and this is the way I'm going to do it. You know, I hope that you come back one day. I hope that we cross paths, but that's, that's not really up to me. So how will you know a good guru from a bad guru? You know, the truth is most of the time you won't know. And that's, that's really the frustrating thing about this. Um, but, I, but I can say this, is that a guru, a true guru, will look to free you, not to enslave you. There will never be this feeling that says you must be with them or must serve them or must, you must go to their ashram and pay them money. You must um, do all this sort of thing. They might say, hey, this is good for you. You know, it'd be great to have you around, kind of do it. Uh, if you want, but there's not going to be this um, overwhelming, dogmatic sort of teaching given to you that you are a bad person if you don't do what I say. Um, there's just a true guru will say this: this will free you from your own suffering, and this probably not so much. <laughs> um, but they're not saying you're good or bad. You see, it's it's a different sort of paradigm. It's it's more about this is the way I know I can guide you through this. And perhaps there's another way, but this is the way I know, you know, and, uh, and that's it. The other thing I want to say is that there are different levels of gurus. You know, there are some really great gurus out there. You know, they're really great. Namadeva was an awesome, awesome guru, you know, and still is, I'm sure. You know, he's not in the physical body, but he was great. Mira, or her name is Ganga, that was given to her by her, her husband, Papaji, who was a, a very enlightened master. And she goes by Ganga now, and she's on YouTube, and she does some brilliant satsang, and she puts up satsang every couple of days or, or every week. And she's a real master. She's a beautiful person. I mean, you see her. Uh, she's an older lady, but she's so beautiful and so amazing that you know that this woman is absolutely, totally freeing you with her gentle ferocity. <laughs> That's the best way I could describe it. Uh, David Spiro is a beautiful teacher in San Francisco, too. I, I love him. He's a great... Uh, great transmitter of consciousness. So, um, Sat, Satguru Jaggi Vasudev is is a, a pretty beautiful man too, you know. And 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 you know, like like I said, you know, there could be some really great gurus that you might not agree with everything they say. Uh, sometimes they'll see, say something, and you're like, oh, I don't agree with that at all. But try not to judge them by what they say, okay? Because each guru will say certain things that are needed to say at that time, but their whole goal is to free the people they're speaking to. But it isn't about reinforcing a dogmatic way of life. They're not trying to create a, re a religion. You see, real gurus don't try to create a religion. They try to actually free you from religion, free you from idealisms and things that are torturing you. So um, one person sits in front of a guru, a guru will say one thing, and then another person sits in front of the guru, and then the guru might contradict him or herself altogether because they're wiggling the person free of the mind in that moment, you see? So, when you see satsang on YouTube or you see it somewhere, try not to see if this guru matches your idealism. Don't, don't pick a guru based on that. Pick a guru based on, does, this, does your heart yearn for that person? Is there something very beautiful and amazing and, uh, about them? It's kind of like when you see a child and, and the child might be acting up, but there's something still cute in there, you want to hug them to death? It's kind of like that. So if this is happening with you, that, that's really your sign that, that that guru is for you. you know? So uh, I'm sure I missed out on a million different gurus that are out there. There, there are quite a few. I mean, I wouldn't say a million, but there, there are some pretty great ones out there. And there are different levels. So I would classify myself as a very mini guru. You know, I've been initiated and I'm still evolving and, and moving. But then there are the great ones, the, the ones that have experienced Nirvakapa Samadhi and they've gone deep and then come out and uh, and they've been doing this for lifetimes and, and they've got some brilliant wisdom and knowledge and uh, and an ability to shift their consciousness in such a powerful way. So uh, there are many levels, many levels, just like, the, just like strength. There are many levels of strength, many levels of power and uh, each person or each guru is doing what they can to free you and uh, and just listen to your heart and see which which guru resonates with you, you know. I'm sure some of you are uh, resonating with me, you know. But uh, like I said, I'll be the first to admit that I'm not done. You know, there's lots more evolution I can I can go through to to get to the next level. So I, I hope this helps. 
a little bit. Uh, just, just know that there, whenever there is power, there is the possibility of abuse. And this is still because the person with the power is trapped in their ego and they are suffering somewhat, even if they're not conscious of it. So, so the freer a person is of their own pain, the less likely they will abuse their power because they're already happy. They don't need to do something to find happiness. And that's where abuse of power comes from. They, a person is under the illusion that when they have control over this or control over that person, or this person believes what they have to say, that, oh, then I'll be happy. You know, a, a real guru won't have these games going on. If, if they, they might, <laughs> this is where it gets tricky. Some gurus might show you this just to bring up your fears so you can transcend them. But this won't be a constant state in a guru. This, this, that would be a momentary come and going type thing. I don't think they'd show you this for seven years and you're in, enslaved by some plan. <laughs> it wouldn't happen that way. So, so anyway, I, I, I wish you luck in finding your guru and finding your ideal. So have a great night and enjoy the Guru Purnima. I hope some of these words here today will help you in, in finding your true Guru, your true spiritual ideal or teacher. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again. <laughs>